2018. And, um, and, uh, very much, you know, want, wanted to come back and play. It's been, it's, it's been a while since I've been there and things have been, uh, very busy down there in the border States. And, uh, I wanted to come there and play for everybody. Um, make a, a bit of a return trip after all these years. The band has played over 560 concerts for the military and, and uh, over the last 20 years. So we've been all over the place, played multiple bases um, throughout the States, up in Alaska, Hawaii, Puerto Rico, uh, overseas, Afghanistan, Kuwait, different places. So we've been, we've been all over the place, uh, and the mission of the band, the reason I started the band, is to play for the military. I mean, that's that's really uh, the purpose of the band. The, uh, the, mission, the mission of the band, a little phrase that we use is honor, gratitude, and rock and roll. And we like to bring the honor to honor the men and women who serve our country and the gratitude, of course, and give them a little rock and roll. And we play a little something for everybody. Uh, so we we really enjoy people to come out, have a good time, bring the family. It's a family show and, and it's a lot of fun for everybody. Excellent. I was a little slow on the upkeep on uh, turning the record button on and one of my younger colleagues reminded me. Um, could you repeat when you were uh, last here, sir? Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I've been to Fort Bliss um, a, a couple of times, two or three times. The last time I think was around 2018 and very much wanted to come back. Um, very busy down there and uh, uh, got a, a great mission. A lot of people serving our country and uh, we're looking forward to it. As a performer, is music your first love or or was acting? Oh gosh, well, I, uh, my I had my first guitar in fourth grade. So I had my, uh, I, I started playing well before I started acting. I didn't start acting till sophomore in high school, really. That's when I did my first play, but I played in bands all the way through high school and up into my early twenties. And, and then I got very busy. I started a th theater company with my pals uh, right out of high school and got very busy with that. And that, that theater company now is called, it's uh it's called Steppenwolf and it's been uh, this is we're in our 50th year in Chicago it's a it went from a you know pretty ragtag group of kids starting a theater to a multi-million dollar complex on the north side of Chicago it's a great great american story anyway i i played in bands all the way through uh through high school into my early 20s and then i I picked it up again in the late nineties and started playing for the troops and haven't stopped since. You know, a uh, person of your position, I mean, you could go you know, do a charity to help anybody in the world. If you wanted to, what drew you to helping veterans and, and military families? Well, I think it was a, a few things. There's different seeds that were planted along the way. My, my, my dad was in the Navy when, uh, when I was a kid, um, uh, actually, I wasn't. I, I I think he got he got out of the Navy about ten days after I was born. So, so yeah, when I was a kid, my dad that was in the Navy. But uh, his two brothers served in World War II. Uh, one in the Navy, one in the Army Air Corps on a B seventeen bomber. And uh, their dad, my grandfather, was in in the Army during World War One. He drove an ambulance in France. Um, and then on my wife's side of the family, multiple veterans. So it kind of starts there with me. And then I just got involved in back in the eighties with supporting Vietnam veterans, uh, Vietnam veterans groups in Chicago. And then I, you know, played Lieutenant Dan and Forrest Gump. And that kind of started me with relationships with working with our wounded through the disabled American veterans organization. And then after, um, September 11th, I just, I dove in and just wanted to be a part of supporting the men and women who were deploying uh, to Afghanistan and Iraq. And so I started visiting them and raising my hand for the USO and then taking a band out and then going to the hospitals. And then it all generated into the creation of a foundation, the Gary Sinise Foundation. And now, um, you know, for years now, um, 
the foundation has been, uh, you know, the, the band is a mission, mission of the Gary Sinise Foundation is part of the mission. So if people donate to the Gary Sinise Foundation, one of the things we will do is send send the band out to place like Fort Bliss and play for everybody. So it's all expenses paid on the American people who donate to the Gary Sinise Foundation. A free concert there at Fort Bliss. We hope everybody comes out. I'm I'm thrilled to be coming back. That is excellent, sir. Um, now, uh, Lieutenant Dan is one of those roles, uh, you know, uh, that's just so iconic. You know, the, uh, Forrest Gump was made 30 years ago. It's still, you know, super fresh. It just seems like, um, man, it's, it's just one of those roles that people, I think, are always going to talk about. Um, any thoughts on uh, how much uh, that role may have influenced you getting into involved with veterans? Yeah, that, that uh, well, that role really, um, I really wanted to play that role because, um, as I said, back in the 80s, I got involved with supporting Vietnam veterans groups. My wife's two brothers served in Vietnam. There's, her sister's husband was in Vietnam, a combat medic. Um, I, you know, I just, uh, I, I very much wanted to play that part of the Vietnam veteran Lieutenant Dan in that movie. And, um so when I got the opportunity to audition for it, it was really uh, a blessing that I actually got the part. And that, that led me to uh, a relationship, a long time relationship now, 30 years with the DAV, Disabled American Veterans. And they invited me to their national convention after I, you know, after the movie came out, they saw it and, you know, here I am playing a wounded soldier and, and they wanted to uh, give me their national commander's award for playing Lieutenant Dan. So I went and, you know, I didn't really know what the DAV was before that. And I walked out on stage and there's 2000 wounded veterans out there just hooting and hollering about Lieutenant Dan. And, and, and it really was uh, impactful and uh, made a big impression on me. So I, I just kept, I just kept working with uh, our wounded and then, you know, when we started, when we got attacked on September 11th and we started deploying to Afghanistan and Iraq and we started having people get hurt and killed and I just, I raised my hand for the USO and just wanted to go out there and do do something. And I found that, you know, walking into the hospitals to somebody who's missing their limbs from, you know, serving in Afghanistan or Iraq or something and in comes Lieutenant Dan and they, they want to talk to me about the movie. And, you know, the, the good thing about that character is that it, it's a happy ending for Lieutenant Dan at the end of that movie. He's, he's walking again on new legs and, and, you know, it's a hopeful story and uh, our wounded, you know, everybody, everybody who gets wounded, they, they want a hopeful story in the end. They want to know that they're going to be okay. And, and moving on. So that led me to just create a foundation that would support them and try to help them move on. And we've, we've done, you know, done a lot at the Gary Sinise Foundation with the support of the American people. We've built 90 houses for badly wounded service members. We've provided entertainment all over the world, uh, served a lot of food. We provide relief grants for all kinds of service members and families. We take care of Gold Star children. We serve our first responders in many ways. So a lot of stuff going on at the Gary Sinise Foundation. All awesome stuff, sir. All awesome stuff. And it's uh, kind of refreshing, too, to hear somebody, you know, uh, recognizing the sacrifice of the most recent veterans, these uh, constant deployments, you know, that it's, uh, you know, training, deploying, coming back, reintegrating, training, deploying, going back, you know, I mean, some of these guys have deployed, you know, seven, eight times. It's just, it's just insane. Well, it's, it's, it's insane. And the, you know, it's, it's just crazy what they do. They volunteer to do it and they stick with it and they go where they're told and they do what they have to do. And then, you know, I think somebody like me who shows up and says, Hey, thank you <laughs> for what you're doing. I know it's been hard on your families. It's been hard on you. Uh, you know, you've lost buddies, you've lost friends. Um, you've been through a lot. Your family's been through a lot. Somebody like me showing up and playing some music and patting them on the back and, 
and providing services through a foundation and everything that could, that can help them through. And that's what I want to do. I, 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 again, like I said, I have Vietnam veterans in my family and I remember what it was like for them to come home and have no services being provided by anyone outside of the government. Uh, and I think the government can only do so much to take care of our service members and veterans. We, as citizens, we we can take some responsibility for the people who protect and defend us. And uh, I'm I'm privileged that I've had a great career in the movie and television business. I can do something positive with it to, to help our defenders out. That is awesome, sir. This was a really great interview. Uh, anything I didn't ask you, anything you want to add about your trip out to Fort Bliss and El Paso coming up? Just really want everybody to come out and see us. If there are Border Patrol folks that are uh, listening to this, uh, you know, watching this this interview, uh, I'm uh, contact Fort Bliss and come on out and have some fun. I know they've been working hard on the border, so we want to we want to give everybody a good time and our service members certainly, and their families who go through all these multiple deployments and have been through a lot over the years who are serving at Fort Bliss, let us come out and entertain you. Please come out, have a great time. It's a great band. We played hundreds of concerts. You're going to have a great time. Awesome, sir. And I would be really remiss if I just didn't say this on a personal note. I thought you were brilliant as George Wallace and as Harry Truman in those two biopics. Just, <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, uh, I, I'm, I'm not old enough to remember when Harry Truman was president, but I was, you know, he was still around when I was a boy and even into, you know, being, you know, like, you know, 12 or 13, I think when he died and you really nailed his mannerisms and everything. I, I was, oh, it was you. eerie. It was eerie. So that was that, that was a great project to work on. And it was based on a, just a, that wonderful book by David McCullough. It's a magnificent book. And, you know, the, the challenge there with that one was trying to stuff a very full life into two hours. Yeah. You know, we had to compress a lot of things, but I, I was really privileged to work on that. Well, thank you very much for your time, sir. This was a real uh, honor for me to be able to talk to you. Well, come on out to Fort Bliss. Let thank us play you very much, you. sir. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye.